Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. Now in this video I'm going to show you how we dangle pump a basement floor. So we couldn't quite reach this basement floor with the concrete trucks and our 16 foot chute. So we decide just to pump it. Now this is pretty typical foundation for a, for a house here in, on the coast of Maine. We have a lot of ledge around the coast. It's really rocky around our coast. So a lot of the bigger houses have partial basements like this. They'll have a full basement. And then on the other side of that concrete wall in the back is, is even a bigger area that's just right full of ledge. So that's just going to be a crawl space in there. And what I mean by ledge is if you can kind of see those big rocks, those boulders up in the back kind of piled on each other. Well, there's even bigger ones in that section in the back that they couldn't dig out of there with the excavator. So they just leave them for the foundation and you know we try to skim all that over with some concrete just to cap it but uh, this piece here we're doing this basement floor this is about 550 600 square feet we're doing as you can see it's got the radiant heat tubing in it uh, we put up some ISO strip there around the perimeter to keep the concrete floor from bonding to the concrete wall give it some room to expand and contract but the pump truck is key for us. I mean, it just makes pouring concrete so much easier. For us, in Maine, it cost about, to pump a floor like this, it cost about $750 to get the pump truck there. And then you got to buy an extra yard of concrete just to fill up, pretty much fill up the pump truck and all the piping on the truck. So, I mean, there's another $110, $120 there. So it's almost 900 bucks just to get a pump truck. That's about what I figure. But I mean, in this case, we had to get it because there was no other way of reaching this thing. You couldn't wheelbarrow it, couldn't power buggy it. Uh, the conveyor truck on on the concrete truck wasn't long enough to reach this thing. So sometimes you just gotta break down and pump it. And once the once the pump guy gets out of the way there, you'll be able to see Luke, you know, how easy that pumps and just puts the concrete right right where you need it. We're using a 3000 PSI mix for this floor. This is a pretty standard floor mix for us. Um, we've got no air entrainment in the concrete and we've got a water reducing admixture. I know a lot of you guys have probably heard me talk about that before. And with that water reducer allows us to do is pour a pretty loose slump without affecting the strength of the concrete so we can pour what we call a six or even a seven inch slump and that's pretty wet but it doesn't really affect the strength it doesn't really hurt the water cement ratio because that water reducer additive is what's making the concrete loose not the water so I mean when you pour concrete every single day that's I mean that's just the better way to do it, I feel. Especially if you don't have a huge crew. I mean, pulling around stiff concrete's not fun. And, and we like to have fun. As you can see, I'm, I'm setting my pads now in the middle, wet padding. I got my uh, Topcon RL H5B self leveling laser there I'm using with the receiver and the grade stick. That's, that's, the re that's the laser I recommend using for concrete work. If, you know, if you guys are in the market looking for a laser, I'd definitely check that out. I got a link for it down in the description. You guys can get it right there, or you can probably get one just about anywhere online. We like, as you can see, we're pouring out most of this. You know, if you don't pour concrete every day, you might not want to pour out quite so much concrete at once. But if you do, if you're like us, I mean, you probably pour out. 75% of this floor before you start straight edging it. You see the girls there doing a good job, kind of leveling things out best they can by eye. And I'm going around magging the edges right to the top of that ISO strip. When we put that ISO strip on, you know, we'll shoot, we'll shoot a grade around that foundation using the laser. I'll mark it with a pencil and then we'll snap a chalk line. And then we'll put that ISO strip right even with the top of the chalk line. And we use a glue adhesive, a spray-on adhesive to put it on. 
that's what I find is the easiest way to put that ISO strip on. So you spray that glue on the concrete wall, give it a few seconds just to get tacky, and then that white ISO strip stuff that just sticks right to it. It's real easy. Now Luke's getting the straight edge out so we can strike our wet pad. He's going to help me finish magging the edges. This, uh, this foundation's in Southport, Maine, which is real close to Booth Bay Harbor. I don't know if any of you guys ever heard of Booth Bay Harbor, Maine. If you have, let me know down there in the comments. How many of you guys have e even been to Maine for vacationing, or do you live in Maine? Let me know if you live in Maine or if you've visited Maine, too, down there in the comments. Maine's a great place to visit from about usually the end of May, June, July, August, e even into October. When October shows up and fall starts setting in, the leaves on the trees look really, really colorful. So we get a really cool fall around here. And about time, about the time Thanksgiving shows up is when the cold weather really starts setting in. So we'll pour, we pour outside floors like this all the way through November, past Thanksgiving, usually usually into December before any snow or freezing temperatures really start affecting us. You know, we'll have to start covering the floors. If we poured a floor outside like this the end of November, we'd have to cover it up because it would get below freezing at night. But we can usually still pour outside all the way through November. You see, I'm making another wet pad there. Getting ready to straight edge this thing. Shooting grades with that laser is really easy. That thing's that thing's really accurate. So I'm striking the pad myself while Luke's finishing up magging. He's gonna grab an end, then we'll finish that pad, then you'll see a straight edge in here. We decided just to screed this thing by hand and not use the Vibra screed. We, we got a Vibra screed from Marshalltown. It's the Vibra Stripe. And I really like that thing. But this thing just wasn't quite big enough to take that off the truck. But if you guys, you know, if, if you're kind of new to this and you can't screed, hand screed like we do, that Vibra Stripe, it's called the Shockwave. But the Shockwave from Marshalltown is definitely the way to go. I've got some other videos with with us using that shockwave and uh, I would definitely check that out. It's about 1600 bucks but it's it makes creed and concrete really easy. Luke and I, I mean we've we've screeded concrete together for so long that it's it's just like riding a bike for us. So that's what we call kick screeding right there. As you can see, I'm pulling that straight edge back, just kicking and filling in my foot tracks. I don't have to stop. I just pull it right straight down. It's kind of a rhythm thing going on. You can see we're keeping that straight edge kind of on the back edge. We're not digging in with the front edge. That's once you learn how to do that, that's a real easy way, easy way to screed with two guys. When I was younger, when I did big floors, like 10,000, 15, 20,000 square foot floors, I'd, you know, they'd usually just be two of us that would straight edge the whole floor that way. One guy would grab one end, I'd grab the other end, and we'd screed the whole floor. That was before even those fiber screeds came out. They didn't even have those back then. <laughs> so Luke's bull floating. That's, the bull float we get is from Marshalltown too. We really like Marshalltown tools if you guys haven't noticed. Marshalltown uses us really good with their tools so I, you know, I, I highly recommend their tools. I got a bunch of links. All these tools are down in the description. If you need any tools you know, go ahead down there and you can go right to Marshalltown's website from, from one of those links in the description. They'll even, if you use a discount code they gave me, EAC, they'll give you 10% off any tool. 
and then they'll ship it to you for free too so that's a pretty good deal so I'm gonna finish pouring the concrete in that little section and they're gonna move the pump over to the other section and we're gonna show you how we're gonna finish up this basement floor here You can see, you know, if, if you know what you're doing, you don't have to hurry. We're not really hurrying here. We're taking our time. We know how long we have to work with the concrete before it starts setting up. Because we do it every day. And then, you know, based on the outside temperatures, if you're in the sun or not, how long it takes the truck to get there, you know just about how that concrete's going to act. This was about an hour and 20 minute ride for the concrete truck. So it was in the truck quite a while. We don't use any uh, set retarders or anything like that. This is just plain regular concrete. A bunch of tall trees around here. So this thing's going to be in the shade for a while. the girls there puddling behind us they do a good job raking that concrete around he is pushing up that concrete making sure we got plenty for our feet it's like we're a little bit low there we'll get some more pulled in there we'll get that bull floated How many of you guys? How many of you guys out there? Leave me, leave me a comment. How many of you guys out there want to start your own business? You work for somebody, and you're thinking about going out on your own, but you don't quite, you don't quite dare. You don't quite have enough work to do that, or you don't dare to. Or you don't know how to. You know, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you know. Maybe the one or two things I could help you with to start your own business. Is it? Is it where do I get enough work? You know, do I need to be incorporated or or what? what? What do you guys need the most, you know, if you want to start your own business from me? How can I help you the most? I'd like to make a video on that to tell you guys, you know, I could share with you how I did it, the things I did wrong, the things I would do if I did it again, what I'd do better. Um, you know, I've been doing this for 39 years now, so... I might be able to help some of you guys if you want to start your own business. Alright, Luke's going to finish this little section up. You can see we're on the other side pumping out the rest of that truck so he can wash out and get back on the road. Um, Luke's showing you how to kick screed with just one person with a 10 foot straight edge. But if, I mean, if you want to be in the business of doing concrete floors, concrete flat work, and that means, you know, pools, pool decks, sidewalks, patios, driveways, you know, I call flat work pretty much anything flat. That's what we do. We don't do concrete walls. All we do is the flat work. You can make a good living from that if you run it right. Just like any business, you got to know how to run it. You got to know how to, how to handle your money. You got to pay your bills. But there's a learning curve to that too when doing it right. You got to know what you have for insurance, you know, your, what to do with, for employees and payroll, payroll taxes, how to pay that, all that stuff, and and uh, keep on track with it. It's it could be pretty easy to get behind if you don't know what to do. So you can see how easy that pump made putting that concrete down there. I mean, that was that's about as easy as it gets using a pump truck. The key is, you know, giving those pump truck guys enough notice so you can get them. I know where we're from. They're they're pretty scarce, so you got to give them at least a week, if not two weeks, notice sometimes on a job. More, it seems like more and more people are using pump trucks now than than years ago. Everybody was afraid of the price years ago. Now it's now they figured out that you know you save so much time and energy just getting the pump there and, and having it place the concrete for you that it's definitely well worth the eight or nine hundred bucks or whatever you guys pay. What do you guys pay anyway? Let me know. I mean that's 
roughly that's what we pay about 900 bucks for just a regular pump truck like I said before and we get it for four hours anything over four hours they start charging you extra so that's from when they show up until the, when they get done washing out I think we might need just a little bit more in there where Luke and Abby are before we can finish up I'm going to move my laser up top there so I can shoot some grades up top. But Luke's going to finish straight edge in this little piece and he'll both load it. Luke's been doing this a long time though. He's been doing it almost 20 years now. So that's how you use a pump truck guys I mean I would use one to your advantage whenever you can you just got to work it into your quote you know hopefully hopefully when you come look at a job like this you can price it in because if somebody didn't price it in then I mean they're gonna be struggling to pour this but you just got to be up front with people too and say look we can't reach this it's gonna be X amount of money for a pump truck plus you know don't forget the yada concrete you got to use to fill the the truck up with and most people will understand the added cost you just can't be afraid to to be up front and honest with people and tell them you got to use one because you definitely don't want this to be coming out of your pocket it's not if you're the floor guy like me it's not your fault you can't reach this thing it's definitely your advantage to use one but you should you should be able to price it into the job We really like that bull float right there is the one where you twist the handles to move the front and back edges up and down. And that that's an advantage when you get in a tight spot like Luke's in right now. You can keep the handles really high and still be able to move the bull float back and forth. So Luke's going to finish that up. And... You guys let me know if uh, if you think using a pump truck's worth the 900 bucks or not. And we'll see you on the next video.